Now, if we break down the term state management, you can see that it's managing of state. But what is that state? There are two types of data that you can have in an application. There's regular data or information that you have. So it's hard coded and all you can do is just see it. Or you can have state, which is fancy data that you can manipulate and change. You can think of it as one is read only, the other one is read and write. The most common example I could think of for state management is user information. Almost every app has this. Every social media has your profile information. Within code, you might have a state called the user info state. So this is can contain all the information for that specific user. And on the home screen, you might have something that says like, hello, Tadis. So the name part would be the actual state. And you'd be able to manage it by going probably to some settings page. And it'll be like, do you want to change your name? And maybe I want to change the T-Dog or something. And now when I go to the home screen, it'll say, hello, T-Dog. And that state has been updated and changed. And there are many more examples of state. For example, the news feed, follower accounts, counter applications, to-do lists, all those things all need to be managed within state. So overarching, simplest definition of state is just data that can be manipulated. So we got the state part of state management figured out. What does the management part mean? What does it mean to manage state and why do we have to do it? So let's take the above example for the user info state, a state that holds information all about the user. There are so many ways in an application that this user information can get updated. Whenever the user creates an account, whenever they go into their settings page, maybe whenever another user follows them, I'm sure there's many more. And there are also many places where this information can get read. For example, on the home page, you might have a hello Tadis or whatever user's name it is. You also have their name on the profile page. You have a profile picture in the top corner of every single page, follower account on the profile page, and whether someone's following you or not. And I'm sure there's many other places where you need the user information within your application. So what would happen if we didn't use state management and we have to do all the above things that I just listed? So in order to see that information, you would have to pass that information to every single screen within the application. Now that sounds bad, but even worse. Let's say you want to update that information. You want to change the name from Tadis to T-Dog. Without state management, it'll only probably get updated in that single screen. So you have to set up a mechanism to update it throughout the whole application and make sure you don't miss it anywhere. Now, this sounds pretty complex, but thankfully we do have state management. And a proper state management solves two very important problems. It centralizes all the data in one place so that there's a single source of truth and whenever that data changes, it notifies the UI that the data has changed and that the UI should rebuild. If you've heard about the topic of state management, it's probably from the debates about which state management solution is the best. But you do not need a package in order to maintain your state. In fact, every state management package is built upon Flutter itself. So of course, this is possible to do with strictly Flutter code. Here, we're going to walk through an example of how to build your own state management solution for the counter application. Now, a quick warning, this is gonna get a little bit complicated and you don't necessarily need to know how all of this works under the hood. That's why there are packages in the first place, but I think understanding this will definitely help you understand how state management in general works and also how those packages work. The most important thing is having one source of truth for all the data related to a specific function. Since we are making a counter application, the main and only feature in this case is the actual counter. For bigger applications, you might have a collection of data about the user. So you would set up a user info class to be the central location for everything related to users information. In this case, I'm going to create a state.dart file and inside create a counter state class. This counter state class will just have that counter that we're trying to manage. I'm going to use the VS code dart data class generator extension in order to create a copy with method here. Now this copy with method is used whenever you have instantiated a class with a specific value and when you want to create a new class with all the other same properties except the ones you want to change. So in this example, it might not really make sense because there's only one property, but you can imagine if you had like username and you had the actual email or something and you wanted to update the username, you would take the old user profile and copy with the new user profile. And this will have all the other same information. So same email, same everything else, except with the new username. So the state is now defined, but we need to be able to give access to this state to other parts of the application. To do this, use an inherited widget. You can find more information on inherited widget on the Flutter docs, but the simple explanation is that it allows widgets lower in the widget tree access to data within the inherited widget. So the first thing you need to do is you have to define the inherited widget. I will be naming it provider in this case because we will be providing the data to other parts of the application. You'll see later why we do that. Now for the inherited widget, there's a function you need to fill out called update should notify. This function lets you define when the inherited widget should update your application with the new data. You would most likely want to update the app whenever the data changes. However, you have the option to change that. So whenever this returns true, all the widgets using your data from this provider will be told that they should rebuild. The first thing is we need to define the data, which is going to be 
our counter state that we defined here. So the state is gonna be the data that we use. And whenever our current data does not match the old data that we had, we will tell our app to update. And then we'll add this function, which will give us access to the data whenever we wanna call it within the application. So not to actually use that data. Like I mentioned earlier, inherited widget lets the widgets that are found below it in the widget tree know that the data has been updated and thus they get rebuilt. So in this case, we want to wrap our whole application in our provider widget. And our provider needs us to pass in the data. So that data is gonna be our state. We can create a counter state with a counter of one. And now we can pass this state to our provider. Now let's remove some of the old logic here and we'll fill this in later with our new state management solution. So now within our app that we want to retrieve this counter value that we created within our state, we will do provider dot of context so even though we don't have any counter defined within our homepage widget, we're able to retrieve it using the inherited widget to retrieve the current counter value. Now this solution is getting a little bit closer, but we are missing one critical step and that is actually updating the state. We define the state to be a constant variable that can't really change yet. So we need to create one more widget that holds that state value and allows us to update it. Now this widget will have two specific roles. So first, is to hold that state. And second is to be the only place within our application that that state can get updated. Now, why is that second piece so important? So let's say you have an application that has counters just all over the place. And then you decide that those counters should actually be incremented by two instead of by one. Without everything being centralized in one place, you'd have to go through every single place where a counter is used and change the logic. However, if it all works from one single place, you can just update it once and it'll be reflected throughout your whole application. Again, with this simple example of counters, it might seem a little bit cumbersome, but imagine having so many different data pieces, user data, maybe counter data, maybe to do data, all those things mingled together. It'll get a little bit confusing and it's nice to have it all in one place. And it'll be a lot quicker to find bugs and to develop your app further. So in this case, we're gonna create another file called the state holder. So here we'll create a stateful widget that is called app state holder, which will hold that state. Again, we wanna be able to access that state using this function. And then to actually create and use that state, we can go over here. We can take the initial state and we'll start at zero. We can take the provider that we had and return that provider. And now within this app holder state, we can actually add functions that will update our current state. And then we can add a function called add that creates a new counter that's incremented by one and set the state to our old state with everything the same except with a new counter. Now, if we go back to our main app, we can wrap this with our app state holder. Now, we still have access to our provider with the counter because our app state holder just wraps that. But now we can also increment it using the app state holder and the add function that we created. Now, if you rerun, you'll see zero and we're able to increment our app just like we were before. As you can see from this example, it was a lot of setup just to get the stupid little counter work. I feel like there should be some pre rerun code to make this a bit easier. Well, you're in luck because we have packages. So hopefully it's pretty clear from the previous section why you would want to use a package. But I want to also make clear that you definitely don't have to use one if you don't want to. If your app is simple enough, just using set state is more than enough. And if you're working in a really big organization, maybe it makes sense to make your own state management solution so that you can control everything about it within the company. For me personally, using a package is the way to go. Packages do something similar to what we did, except with more features, making it more robust, while at the same time making it less set up so it's simpler to use. I can only really recommend two options, but I wanna make it clear these are just my opinions. Riverpod is my favorite option and the one I would recommend for most people to use. If you understand the concepts we covered, you'll notice some similarities between that and Riverpod. Riverpod has some great documentation and you'll notice it uses providers here as well, just like we did. For holding state, you use something called a notifier provider. It provides a state to your application and creates an interface to update that state using a notifier. When you're working with Riverpod, you'll notice it looks similar to what we created above just with less boilerplate. Here we have a to-do data class with a copy with function and a to-do's notifier that has functions like add a to-do, remove to-do, toggle to-do. And then we have this to-do's provider to provide it the functions and the data to the rest of our application. If you want to dive deeper on how you would use Veripod with Firebase, which is the most popular choice for Flutter apps, I have built a whole course just on that. In my opinion, Riverpod is the least boilerplate while also utilizing the core Flutter features properly. Now, Block is another very popular solution within the Flutter community. It is known to scale well and be a good solution for big projects. Once again, it has good documentation, and this is just my personal opinion, but I don't choose Block for most projects because there is a lot of boilerplate again. Although it's probably less than setting it up yourself, and especially now with Qubits, there's even less setup, but then there's also the Block paradigm that you have to learn. Now, this could be seen as a positive because if forces you to follow good code practices, but I personally enjoy packages with less overhead. Now, there are many other options, so feel free to explore, but these two are the big dogs within the Flutter community, so you can't really go wrong with either.